Melissa McCarthy, Blue Cotton, Raunchy Puppets, and lots and lots of milk. Milk everywhere. It's the Happy Time Murders movie review, folks, today on Miscast Entertainment. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do this. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Get to the chopper! Stand up to my ear, I'm going to make it an off again. This is my You're going to need a bigger boat. What's up, Miscast Miscreants, and welcome to another episode of Miscast Entertainment with your hosts, the wonderful JJ, the magnificent Deadpool head, and yours truly, William Davis Moore. If you're new to the show, then head on over to our channel and check out some of our old episodes so you can uh, watch those and get all caught up. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button and smash that bell so that you can get uh, notified of all future episodes. All right. Let's all right. get right into it, huh? Right into it. <laughs> right into what? It, Some rotten cotton? Let's get in there and um, <laughs> peel off the shit out of it. Peel? Oh, yeah, man. That peel off shit was nasty. Oh, in a world where puppets are real living beings, puppet private investigator Phil Phillips teams up with his ex-partner, Detective Connie Edwards, to hunt down the murderer of his brother. One by one, the killer is systematically taking out every cast member of the 1980s hit television series, The Happy Time Gang. And Phil's former human flame, Jenny, is next on the list. Now, it's up to Phil and Edwards to hunt down the Muppet Slaying Mastermind and finally put an end to The Happy Time Murders. Starring Melissa McCarthy, Bill Beretta, Elizabeth Banks, Maya Rudolph, and Talk Soup's Joel McHale as Agent Campbell. I'm in the fucking FBI. Oh yeah, what's that stand for? Fucking big idiot? <laughs> Spoilers, you bastards. Just, just so you know. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> you didn't see it in the title, like in all caps, or in the description, in all caps. I still yeah, think it's spoiled. You, just don't bother. It's spoiled. Yes, it's ruined. All right. So this movie is directed by Brian Henson, the heir apparent of Jim Henson. It's the Muppet Show. It's time to play the music. It's time to light the light. It's time to meet the Muppets on the Muppet Show tonight. You know that means it's his, it's his son. If anybody was wondering. Yeah, his little baby. His his baby boy. Um, he is the aficionado of the Muppet Treasure Island, which I guess was a classic back in the day. And uh, a Muppet Christmas Carol as well. Yes, a Muppet Christmas Carol. Those are the only two movies he's really done. Well, no, he's done a, he's done a cult classic. Which one? Which was The Return to Oz. He directed Return to Oz? I'm not, I don't think he directed it, but he was the uh, voice of the uh, Jack... The pumpkin. Oh, right. Yeah, he was also was the voice of um, that dwarf troll guy in Labyrinth. What's his name? Uh, he, Hoggle? He, Hoggle? Ho Hoggle, yeah. He was the voice of Hoggle. Everybody loves Hoggle. Yeah, Hoggle with the bobblehead. Yeah, I think bobbleheads came peeing. from Hoggle. <laughs> they, did they? I don't know. It's like I don't know. But Hoggle, Hoggle like started peeing, and then he got annoyed yes. with the little fairies. Yeah, that was cruel, man. Like He was, a, he was an asshole. He was an asshole. Yeah. I'm going to chuck off a 90-second rant. All right, listen. I'm all for R-rated movies. I love R-rated movies. One of the things that pisses me off about Hollywood the most is when you have an R-rated script and they end up you know, toning it down just to make it PG-13 to sell more tickets. I think that's, that, that's some of the worst thing that Hollywood can do. Agreed. That being said, um, this movie, I felt, tried too hard to be edgy. The jokes I thought were were forced. It wasn't like um, it wasn't like they had a a good R-rated joke. I felt that the um, you know it was almost like a hand inside a puppet's ass all the time. Like this is a crude joke, and you know whatever. It, it just I feel you. And that's why I thought that the jokes were just crude for the sake of being crude. They weren't really funny. They weren't really clever. And the movie had like a lot of potential. I mean, the movie had this whole thing going on where it's like a world filled with puppets. And um, I thought, you know, it was an interesting parable about how maybe actors are treated in Hollywood. You know, where like actors are puppets and all they're trying to do is just make a living and entertain us. And humans go and we just like shit on them or at a certain point we just kind of like abandon them. Um, but no, that wasn't the case at all. 
the movie end, ended up for me being like a shittier version of Who Framed Roger Rabbit meets Bright. Uh, Netflix is Bright with uh, Will Smith. Yes. So, no, I did not like this movie. <laughs> for those reasons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Round one, fight. <laughs> did you like it? I loved it. You loved it. I did. I, I freaking loved it. I, um, I found it a nice, uh, happy place to be in after three weeks of shitty ass movies. Okay. Um, I, I was glad that I laughed for one that made me really happy, happy. And, um, I got my rocks off as soon as I saw that cow getting milked. As soon as I saw that cow getting milked, I, it reminded me of clerks Two immediately. Okay. And I was like, this is what clerks Two really wanted to do. And they just didn't have the balls. And some of the jokes I was like, they were so over the top that uh, I was like, they they pushed the adult limit, right? Like of what you you found it as like um, shock value. I found it to be just kind of like cheap and sophomoric, right? Well, yes, definitely. No, 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 no. That that is exactly what it was. Okay. But maybe it was the fact that I hadn't seen a good movie in a long time, and I just okay. needed to laugh my ass off. Maybe it was the fact that I walked into a movie theater and the only person sitting next to me was this hot girl taking notes as well, so she must have a blog somewhere. Okay. Uh, I should have said something to her, but I freaking got lost if in my... If you're out there, <laughs> Miss, William would like to speak with you. You know who you are. I made you move your purse. <laughs> 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 no, uh, actually, um, yeah, I mean, when I get into it uh, in a little bit later, and when we get into the discussion, um, okay. after my 90 seconds, uh, I'll explain why I'm so into puppets and puppeteering and practical effects. Okay. But... Um, you know, just for I didn't go into it with um, to, to to shorten or to end my my little segment. I didn't go into it with any preconceived notions. I didn't go into it like thinking I need this amazing storyline. I went into it thinking I just want to laugh. I want to see. I want. I want. Th- what I really wanted the most was I want to suspend my disbelief and believe that those Muppets are real. Okay. And it, that happened. So. <laughs> wow, that's that's magical. Yeah. I wish I wish I could have been in the, in that state. Um, unfortunately, I've been hearing about this movie for the last like six or seven years. I right. mean, it's it's been in um, there was a couple scripts floating around right. about this very serious puppet noir film, and a lot of people were were very excited to see something like that. I think that would have been pretty clever. And I guess um, people like me thought that the movie is just going to be more straightforward and dark, which could dark. Have, yeah, could have lent itself because of their puppets to just like a, a very dark comedy. It, it kind of was a dark comedy, though. Well, I think some of the jokes are just like too obvious I for mean, it to it, be like a dark comedy. If they put blood in the cotton, that shit would have been brutal. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but I'm saying make it more, make it more like a real gritty, like almost like um, what's that movie with Russell Crowe that he goes uh, L.A. Confidential. Oh, well, I think you, you won like I want like an Oscar LA comp- nomination. Yes, shit. yes, that's <laughs> exactly <puppets>. that's exactly <laughs> what the what the script read like. You know, really? it's like a very serious like uh, noir crime film that took place in Hollywood, and uh, it it took place in Hollywood, I guess. It did. But uh, but no, it's just a, it's a little it was a little too goofy for for my taste. Ah, I got you. Last episode, uh, you said you didn't like puppet i don't movies. like puppets i don't like any of the muppet movies the muppet show i would watch none it. of them none of jim henson's movies uh, no i love labyrinth okay. labyrinth is a classic the dark crystal amazing yes but if if the movie begins with a muppet blah 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 it's garbage Whoa. a muppet <laughs> christmas carol fuck that movie oh, a muppet yeah, movie right. muppets in new york muppets take manhattan yeah, yeah, yeah. All those movies are crap. I can't stand them. I can't stand. Them. I hate Miss Piggy. I fucking hate Miss Whoa. Piggy. I think she's really annoying. Why be you when you could be what? Oh. All right, all right. Who can't join this picture, huh? <laughs> Kermit is like a little bitch Kermit all the bitch. time. The only character that has a soul that's like like a really cool character is like Animal. Because he's like, you know, he's he's fucking raw. He like yeah. he, all he wants to do is just play the drums and have a good time. And and I love Animal, but all the other characters are just shit as, as far as I'm concerned. Animal has like a hardcore band. He Dude, jams, animals, man. animals, like, amazing. I think yeah. we should have like an animal movie. If there was a movie just called Animal and it was about Animal, just being Animal, 
I would watch it. I, I'm yeah. Animal's awesome. He doesn't yeah. even say anything. He's like rrr, rrr, rrr. he doesn't need to say like, anything. That's how. <laughs> that's what an amazing character he is. Page of mine. It's a he, right? Yeah, I assume it's a he. We don't know. I have no freaking idea. <laughs> like, It'd be a trip <laughs> if at the end you find out Animal's a woman. <laughs> Who knows? This day and age, you know. Yeah. You never know. You could switch. Um, let me give you a little diatribe into why I like. I'm puppets. I'm curious to see. So back in the day. Uh, the mid nineties, 90, 94 ish. Um, okay. showing my age there a little bit. Um, first stint into college. Um, I was the very first college credit in the United States to take or to offer computer animation. Um, so I was the first class to do that. There were, I think like 12 of us. Um, they didn't know how to do our curriculum. So we had classes in 2d animation, the early 3D animation programs. I mean, the second year I was in college, Toy, Toy Story came out. Okay. So the, the first things we learned were like the stop motion animations that they did for Jurassic Park that never even got used. The, the guy that did that came into our class for like a couple months and like taught us how he oh, did nice. it. nice. Um, so we had like the second whole part of our curriculum was called industrial tech and design. And it was sculpture and puppet making. So they wanted us to learn how to do like puppets and sculptures to somehow translate that into 3D animation. They, again, they didn't know what to teach us. They were playing it by ear. Okay. So I spent like two years making stupid ass puppets. My first puppet was like this stupid bulldog. I did, I made this whole freaking set with this bulldog playing the drums like animal, you know, and I did this whole play with this freaking bulldog playing the stupid drums. Bulldog ha have a name? I don't remember, dude. You're going back like 20 some years, okay. man. Again, my age. <laughs> You're older, though, so it's... <laughs> Why, don't put me out there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I, I got, like, a certain kind of, like, inside love for puppeteers and, like, puppet making and stuff like that. So when I went into this movie, I was just happy to see the Muppets coming out. I felt like it was a tribute to all the 80s kids. I felt like the movie was a tribute to 80s buddy cop film noir you know, they even threw in some early 90s, you know, basic instinct stuff. Yes. I f the music, if you listen to certain scenes, was very much basic instinct. Uh, very awesome. And uh, it just kept bringing back memories of just like a good time with the Muppets. And I felt like Brian, you know, his dad always had a racy edge. If you've seen the Dark Crystal, which is fucking amazing. Uh, that one does have like an Oscar worthy story. Yes. That one has a really intense, it's not for kids in any way, shape or form. But uh, I felt like what Brian was doing was bringing to the kids of the eighties, a movie that now they could still have their Muppets, but it was more geared toward their sensibilities. Now, maybe a little over the top, like you said, mm -hmm. I mean, there, I did see some jokes that were a little uncomfortable. They were a little bit too crazy. Like the whole freaking office jizz scene. Mm hmm was a little bit like damn they they really left the in the in the freaking udders but uh, yeah the, that was crazy too but um i felt like he was just paying homage to you know all this nice stuff that you grew up with and now that you're older the muppets are older with you and they're not getting any work anymore because no one watches muppet shit anymore there's no muppet fucking christmas shit and uh they're like on the street they i felt like they were exactly w the way they are in the industry. Like it wasn't like washed up actors. It was washed up Muppet actors because there's no Muppet roles anymore. Right. And that's what that movie made me feel like I saw. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm just going to throw it up again. So I don't want to keep ranting. No, <laughs> no. I think I think you're making a good point. I think um, I do have a lot of respect for puppeteers. These guys are hunched over behind tables. Have you ever, sure. ever seen any behind the scenes stuff? And there was some behind the scenes stuff that they showed at the end of uh, of the movie, right? Yeah, everybody was like in blue suit, like the jizz scene. Some guys like <laughs> yeah. underneath the guy with the freaking like a what? What are those things that you oh, spray? Oh yes, uh, uh, fun the fun fetty or fun spray or some shit. Can can squirty? Very flammable. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, have you ever seen those YouTube videos yeah, man, where like open your hand. people are like blowing blowing out like birthday candles and then oh. they start spraying that and the person just like gets engulfed in flames. <laughs> It's sad and hilarious at the same time. But, uh, yeah, I have a lot of respect for puppeteers. They're just hunched over for hours at a time. 
they are like the unknown stars, you know, that that just kind of, you know, nobody knows who they are. There was a really good documentary about um, the guy who was Elmo. Oh, yeah. He yeah. got in trouble, didn't he? He did get in trouble. And actually, he's in the movie. He plays, um, he controls uh, the rabbit character. Oh, that was a good character. Yeah. I, I <laughs> forgot what his name was. Bumbly, Bumbly Bubble, Pants? Bubbles, I think. No, 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 bu- no not Bubbles. Um, Bubbles was a, a secretary. I think it was Bumbly Pants or Bumbly... Mr. Bumbly Pants? Bumbly some shit. Comment, please. <laughs> so, yeah. So, he, play, he plays that. He plays a couple characters in the movie, but that Mr. Bumbly Pants being the most uh, prominent one. Oh, wow. And they blew his head off. Uh, no, he gets uh, he gets killed under the i guess he gets drowned or something they find him remember he gets um oh he was the crackhead they made elmo the crackhead that's no 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 no. that wasn't the crack was that the crackhead that got squeezed what how the hell did the bunny die he got his head blown off in the porn shop oh he did yes yes because he had all those dildos and said oh this isn't mine yeah i got 43 children yes (laughs) yes that's right that's right (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he plays the bunny. Yeah. So yeah, I and I, I I feel you there. I feel you there. But that being said, if you're gonna if you're gonna pay homage to these um, performers, give them a better script. That's all I ask for. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. I wasn't aware that they took so long to write that script. I mean, I did see an interview with Brian Henson where he was saying that they they came up with the idea in like 2012. Um, that kind of needs to be like unforgiven because the script was definitely like kitty slapstick college humor. Yeah. Like it, I, th- it wasn't a story. Like it was just, a, it was like, it was like a cliche. Yeah. The whole damn movie was a cliche. Um, that's my only negative for the thing, but it was, yeah. it was nice for me to see like, you know, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I just did. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, that's, I, that's, I that's I good. I wish I would have been in a better I don't know. Well, frame compare, of it, or something. compare it to Mile 22 and Extinction and all those other movies we've been reviewing, except for mm. except for uh, Mission Impossible. But yeah. The last three, and and I'm sure it rates a little bit high on the list. At least you laughed. I'm sh- you did not laugh. I laughed a couple times. Yeah, <laughs> I laughed a couple times when she licked the mirror and it was salty. <laughs> like yeah. Shit was funny. <laughs> right. She goes, I peed on that mirror. <laughs> That crackhead scene, that 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 alone was right. like amazing. So, well, one of the things that I found really interesting. Well, actually, I have a question for you. Okay. So, we obviously saw some of the best jokes in the movie trailer. The movie trailer had the yes. gi- the whole jizz scene. Yes. It had the you know I'll suck your cock for fifty cents. You know that whole thing, the yes. whole rotten <laughs> cotton scene. Yeah, yep. Uh, the whole snorting, the yep. candy cocaine, whatever the hell it was. Right. Um. Did you laugh again when you saw those scenes in the movie? Not the ones from the trailer. Right. No, I mean, I've already seen them. So that's what I'm saying. Like, the the trailer, I think, really pushed hard to get people to watch this movie, unfortunately ruining some of the best jokes in the movie. I don't think there was a better joke than the ones we saw in the trailers. The salty mirror. That's my favorite joke yeah? of the whole movie. Okay. That and the cow. The cow and the salty mirror. My favorite joke in the mirror was... Uh, when in the movie you mean yes yeah, <laughs> there's a joke in the mirror there's a joke in the mirror <laughs> my favorite joke in the movie was when uh mccarthy sees her husband that was awesome yeah and she's like oh i, I could have fucked you or something yeah that was awesome and he's like hey there's still time yeah meats and cheeses meats and cheeses big bear sandwich <laughs> take a bite all right so ratings ratings i'm gonna say uh man For me, I give it one out of ten. What? Wow. Okay. I mean, I can't really. You made your case. <laughs> I believe you. You just don't like puppets. You, I, you're a puppet hater. I hate you're like puppets. The, you're like the people in the movie. You, I you, hate you puppets. Have, you Look, despise puppets. Look, if the movie would have been brilliant, I would have probably given it five out of ten just because it had fucking puppets in it. Being that I hate puppets and I thought the script was kind of shitty and the jokes, in my opinion, were a bit forced, I'm going to go with the one. Wow. All right. I'm going to go with uh, seven out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Uh, again, for the reasons I stated, nostalgia um, and the the just 
bringing back like the the Muppets to my life, but in a in a forty two year old uh, genre area, okay. and then and then calling back to when the Muppets were something, you know, from the eighties, right? Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Okay. And Melissa McCarthy, if you get another role, please do something that has different character arcs because my God, man, you can't keep playing the same character. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly I think I think she's a great actress. She has potential. She um, does. In Bridesmaids, we saw we saw, you know, her role when she's talking to Kristen Wig about what it was like, you know, for her in high school. She would always get picked on and, and yes. all this other stuff. And then she went to school and now she's very successful. I love that scene. I love that scene in that movie. And but nobody's been able to like give her a really good script. Well, like I said, everybody's writing scripts for her, not to include her. I would love to see her get a script that like Kathy Bates would get. Right. Like um I would love to see her like in a misery type role or even like in a you know, fried gr- green tomatoes or something. Just give her something with a little bit more depth. It may be ruined already, though, because even if she broke someone's ankles with a sledgehammer, I would well, laugh no. my ass off. Not, not <laughs> <laughs> Shh, darling. Trust me. God's sake. It's for the best. Hey, please! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think she can pull off like a really dark, yeah, scary character. She totally, she, she yeah. could. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's it, guys. That's our review of The Happy Time Murders. And not very happy. Yeah, he's not happy. I'm happy, so that's a mid-happy movie. Um, I recommend you see it, but I wouldn't recommend it in the theater because uh, I think people would have more fun if you just watched it at home. You wouldn't feel so invested. Maybe if you got baked, you'd probably enjoy it yeah, more. Yeah, a couple puffs off the old bong. and A couple puffs, never hurt anybody. Yeah, and any, any kind of blue cotton you see is going to make you laugh your ass off. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, so that's it. That's our review. That's Miscast Entertainment, guys. And, uh, hey, if you like me saying hey, comment below. If you don't, I'll stop saying it because I'm already getting annoyed with that. Head on over to our channel. Hit that subscribe button. Smash the bell right next to it. Crack it like the Liberty Bell so you get notified of, like, you know, new stuff coming out. And uh, we have some Miscast merch on Teespring. Link's in the freaking description. I'll throw a promo code. It'll only be active for three days. But it's ten percent off for three days. Nice, yeah. And uh, I'm like, sticking. In like ten weeks, we'll get a hat and a shirt, and we'll wear it on the show. <laughs> okay. I keep changing the logo a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah, but by the time this episode comes out, which is now, the logo has changed. So get that get that uh, stuff right now. Hey, it might change again. You might have like the unique Teespring merchandise. Okay, maybe we could do some limited edition prints. Yes. Catch us on Miscast News, and we'll see you then. Later. See ya. How do I look? Really? Uh, well, I had a little thing, a little tiny thing done.